everyone, I'm Peachy, or you can call me Peachy or Peach. Either one is fine. I just want to say welcome, welcome to all the newcomers that have found my channel, and welcome back to the people that have been subscribed to me for a while. So about this video, we are gonna talk about top 10 things that I wish I knew as a beginner artist, and hopefully these tips will also help you on your art journey. Disclaimer. This is all from my own experiences, so just take it with a grain of salt because everybody is different on their own art journey. To start off, the first thing that I wish I knew as a beginner artist is 1. Challenge yourself always. When I was younger, I would only draw best shots. Yes, head to shoulder drawings. That's all I ever did. That's all I did for commissions, that's all I did for fun. And that's all I did for speed paints. Challenging yourself can always be difficult though. Because once you're very comfortable with something, there will be a point where you will hit that stop sign. And at that point, you will feel like you've stunted. You stop growing as an artist. You can't draw anything else. And once you hit that point, it means that it's time to move on to drawing more than what you already can draw. So no. You're not a bad artist. If you feel like you're getting nowhere, it just means you're not looking or trying new things. My best tip to give out for challenging yourself is to always start small and to do it step by step because you don't want to bite more than you can chew. So you want to realize what you can draw right now and then go on from there. Sometimes we want to be complex and dynamic and detailed with our art, but we just don't have the experience and the knowledge to do that. So it's okay to be simple at first. Think simple. If you still don't really understand what I mean by starting small, here's an example. Going back to how I only drew buzz shots, I knew I couldn't really draw full bodies. And when I did try to draw full bodies, I always resulted in the same kind of pose. So, in order to fix that, I looked for similar poses that are a little dynamic and more different from just a standing pose. So I go on from there, eventually to another dynamic pose and more and more. So that's how you can start out small. Number two, don't be afraid of starting over. When you start to challenge yourself more, it's going to get really difficult at first. But that difficultness is a good sign because it means you are improving. It means you're trying and you're, you're challenging yourself, your skills, and you're practically learning. So don't think of it as like as if you are bad, like you're not enough, you're not doing enough. It means you are honing your skills. So don't be afraid of starting over because it's like trial and error. Through the many trials that you do, you will find all the errors and you will correct them. So do not be afraid. Trust in yourself and do not underestimate yourself. It would always take me about five times to sketch an idea. And that's just a sketch. Because if I don't sketch what I want it to look like in the beginning, it's not going to look like what I want it to look like at the end. So take your time and really, really, really choose quality over quantity. Next is three, always use references. Many beginner artists get frustrated at how their art didn't turn out the way they envisioned it to be. That's because our brain only envisions like 50% of the idea. So it's important to always use references before and during your drawing process. All artists, pro artists, they all use references, or they've always used references to eventually be where they are now. I like to find my references for ideas right before I start drawing, so that I don't have to feel like I'm stuck on a blank white canvas. It's always good to have a couple ideas beforehand, so some tips I recommend is going on Pinterest, and saving a lot of references onto a folder or making a mood board, whichever fits your style really. 
A common problem that I often hear from beginner artists is that they feel like they're copying their references. But the idea here is not about copying and being unique. It's about learning. It's about learning how to create something so that you can draw what you want to draw. When you're using references, you are not simply just copying or tracing. You are learning how the artist drew their composition, their poses, or whatever you're trying to reference from. For example, I always like to tell people to literally trace over the reference or the pose from a human or a drawing so that you can learn how the body anatomy is like. After that, you will then draw it on your own with the reference side by side. And then you will repeat this over and over until you feel comfortable enough to understand how the pose is really like and eventually apply it in your own way. For example, taking a pose that is jumping and then applying that to a different kind of idea. So it's just really taking it part by part and really dissecting where the parts go or how this is drawn and etc. Something that I like to say is that you should study art to not draw, but to study to create. And that by meaning you should not focus so much on how you should draw this way and that way when it pertains to styles or pose referencing or such, but you should focus on studying on how to create something in order for you to learn how to create things in your own way. So if you have zero experience or you have little experience on how to draw something, don't be so hard on yourself at first. Don't be saying that, oh, I'm just copying it, oh, blah, blah, blah. You should just focus on learning. You're learning how this is like. You're learning the pose, you're learning the composition, and then you'll implement it in your own way later on, once you're comfortable and once you have learned. I also want to say that using references is okay to study from and to use in a way where you apply it in your own way. And perhaps I can elaborate it more in a different video, in a future video, but just know that it is not okay to steal someone's art, to trace over it, and copy it completely to that person's art style and claim it as your own. There's a fine line of difference and you need to understand that as beginner artists because people will definitely call you out if they find an art piece that is looking very very similar to another piece and a lot of it is called art theft so be wary of that so remember using reference only to study from so that you can apply it in your own way four learn your programs Seriously, take some time to learn your drawing program. Otherwise, you will feel very lost. There are lots of tutorials online, on Pinterest, on YouTube, DeviantArt, that explains how art programs work, such as Paint Tool Sci, Metabang, Clip Studio Paint, and a lot about Photoshop as well. I know programs can be very complicated especially when you are transferring from one program to another but if you don't learn your program you will miss out on a lot of useful things shortcuts and ways to make your art better so don't limit yourself because i had paint Sight forever until i switched over to clip studio paint last year it was a major change to my art style and i improved so much so sometimes you just have to try new things, such as switching over to a new program. 5. Organize your priorities. As an artist, we tend to be workaholics or we hustle hard. And as you grow up, you find yourself with less and less time to draw. Or you aren't taking care of yourself, so you sacrifice one thing or another, such as sleep or eating. So. Some tips to help is to make a Google Calendar so that you can track how much time you have throughout the week and months. And that way you can block out a time of when to draw. Also, use an art journal. 
it can be on paper or apps such as like notability i always use notability and also use this free site called trello t-r-e-l-l-o it will be listed in the description everything that i will say will be listed in the description to help you guys so make sure to read the description for that use these and apply in your life so that you can make more time and manage your time as an artist six invest in artists now what i mean by this is to really look for resources that are given out by the artists themselves i know that if you support and give your time or money to an artist that you really love they will give back some way or another by either providing you tutorials and resources maybe even answering your questions and prints and even more it's different among each artist an example that i can give out is patreon patreon is a great resource for people to come and pledge to artists by either paying like two dollars a month five dollars a month ten dollars a month either one is up to you to pick and the artist will give something back in return such as giving tutorials or their psd files so that you can look at their layers and time lapses and resources that they've used or freebies that they have to give out so it's really useful for you to invest in artists so that you can learn from them because they have the gold they know what's the deal they have exclusive things exclusive knowledge that they give out to help you in return of your support seven self-care self-care is so so important especially when it comes to artists i remember there used to be like memes of like by kawanasi if you guys know him he he made like a comic of him excusing like bad habits or bad things and saying it's okay i'm an artist so i feel like artists have like that notion or like that bad habit of really just lacking in our self-care like literally cleaning our rooms or sleeping on time having enough sleep or eating on time or even eating and just not taking breaks we have to learn that you know our body will not function if we do not take care of ourselves. So pay attention to your self-care and really just take care of yourself so that you can avoid any burnouts and anything that will prevent you from drawing the best as you can. 8. Struggling is a good sign. Don't get me wrong, struggling is very annoying. But it's a good sign because when you're struggling, you are expanding your horizons, you're going out of your comfort zone, and you are gaining your XP points, aka experience. Most beginner artists say, oh, but I'm so frustrated. But trust me, that frustration will get you far. Just remember to really take care of yourself and to take breaks so that you can really calm down when you are highly frustrated. But as a reminder, do know that through your frustrations, through trial and error, through your challenges, you will get somewhere. It will take you further than you expected. 9. Motivation is not a feeling. It is a driving force. Let me elaborate. Think of it like this. Motivation is the car that has all the reasons we want to draw sitting inside it. So, for example, some people like to draw for their friends. Some people like to draw because of fan art. Some people like to draw for their families. Some people like to draw because it's a way to self-express. So when you feel like you're not motivated, you feel those questions like, oh, why am I not motivated? How can I get motivated? Such thing like that. Well, there's a simple answer to this. You must know thyself. Ask yourself, am I tired? What am I tired of? If I am tired of blank, what can I do about it to help? What do I like? If I don't know what I like, should I look at my Pinterest feed, YouTube, Instagram? Maybe that will tell. What do I want? How does art connect to me? And what do I value about myself and people or the world? These questions are simple, but it can really get you far in understanding yourself more. And it can be as simple as loving cats or loving Disney movies, loving coffee, loving tea, loving games, and more. 
Last but not least, 10. Art is a self-discovery journey. Most times we worry about our art styles. Like, oh, I don't have a style. But in reality, finding your art style is basically just finding what you like to do and dislike to do. What looks more appealing to you and how do you do it. And it's just a lot of trial and error with your interests. You start to be less harsh on yourself as well when you start trying things that you like. And when you find things that you like and dislike, you'll feel better about how to go about in your artist's journey. You'll feel more happier and more aware of who you are and where you stand and what your style is. So go at your own pace, but do not discredit yourself so much because honestly, everybody is still learning and everybody has their own unique art journey. So that completes the 10 top things that I wish I knew as a beginner artist. I really hope that all of these tips, all of these things that I've learned in my own art journey will also help you in your art journey. And I'm always here to help. Feel free to also comment down below if you have any questions. I'll always try my best to help. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more videos like these, make sure to like and subscribe and to hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos. Other than that, thank you for watching. Bye bye!